What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part, I wanna say, 16 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Karl Franz campaign. So as we saw last time, Karl has continued to advance towards Sylvania, both doing the quest for the uh, Drakwald Runefang, or rather the, yes, the Drakwald Runefang Beast Slayer here, and then moving southward to attack an army belonging to the uh, Vampire Council. Well, technically they attacked us, but uh, it didn't help them all that much. Uh, we are going to then advance towards Needling and into Sylvania this episode, and we gotta get to work on this. There's still quite a few of vampire territories to burn out and then return into the fold of the empire proper. Though, to be fair, to give credit where it's due, Vlad did, uh, he did certainly make the province a lot better than it was when it was in human hands, as in mortal human hands, so, uh, yeah. Credit to Vlad, definitely. Uh, he's, uh, for those who are non not familiar with the lore, Vlad basically made Sylvania, which was the poorest garbage province, uh, basically one of the richest in his time, and uh, pretty well disciplined and all that sort of stuff. And he is, of course, the rightful emperor and the rightful elector count, but I'm just saying. No bias here. It's just, these are just facts. Anyway, <laughs> now, let's see what we gotta do this, uh, in this particular turn. Now, let's wait until we move... Mmm... Carl last. There's probably other things that we gotta do. Hmm. Uh, you, oh yes, our new army is ready to go. Minus you, you're gonna take away one of these free company, but that's fine, because we're gonna recruit more of them anyway. And you're gonna move back to Altdorf. You are going to recruit the Silver Bullets, like so. And you're gonna bring them to Carl. There we go. Now, uh, are you safe to move in March stance, I guess is a question. And I'm going to say no, but you can move through this territory. It'll take a little bit longer to get there, but at least we won't suffer attrition on the way. And we're still moving in March stance, so away you go, buddy. Lovely, and then we'll be transferring the Imperial Foot, the Bordermen, the Silver Bullets, and the Reichsguard all to Carl when we get there. It's a little bit unfortunate that we're still having to use mortars, but we're getting there. Seven turns left until we can upgrade the Foundry and then get Cannon and Hellstorm Rocket Batteries, which is just going to be such a major power-up to the faction. As soon as you have access to those Hellstorms, uh, the Empire gets so much stronger. Alrighty, now, Peter, Avon Sigurd, and... Gregor, you're still sieging the Blackstone Post. Do you need to continue? Well, I know that Recruiter needs to recruit, so let's start with recruiting. Uh, let's get, let's say, a couple more units of Pistoliers, like so. Wait, did we give you the Militiamen? I don't remember. We did not. Oh, okay, that's not good. Let's give you the Militiamen. Where are we here? Yeah, so you take the Militiamen to reduce the cost. You are going to transfer these free company over to the Recruiter, and then we need to figure out how many more free company we need here. Uh, I assume about six? Let me just let me just figure this out. So we have Sterling's Revenge in the center, and maybe six free company. That will give us seven, eight units when counting the Lord. And then we put, let's say, six Huntsmen, or seven Huntsmen, I guess, in the army as well. Counting the White Wolves, we won't need the Death Jacks here anymore, we can just transfer them. Uh, that will give us 15 units, and then, ah, damn, we'll run units short. Hmm, no, I guess we could have one less Huntsman then. Alright, that's fine. You can build out four Hunts, or you can build two more Huntsmen. We can have five plus the White Wolves. All can fire while moving. Then, we'll have two units of Pistoliers. Well, four units of Pistoliers and two units of War Wagons. There we go. I will build an army with more War Wagons later on, but uh, not necessarily this one. Uh, we will also maybe want to start on the War Wagons last because their upkeep is higher than the other stuff. So, uh, let's go with... I guess the Huntsmen are the cheapest ones to build right now, so let's build two more Huntsmen right now. One more Free Company, which will put us to one, two... Three, four, General. five, six, and the ideal number. You have your four, so we're good there. All right, happy with that, and then we'll build more stuff next turn. Uh, you Huntsman are General. in Imperial Taxation, but you should frankly probably stay in Imperial Taxation. Uh, we could increase the local recruitment capacity by one here. 
which would speed up the recruitment, but we're in no hurry, to be perfectly honest, at least not right now. Alrighty, you guys are good now. Uh, Carl, I guess it's time for you to advance, unless we have diplomacy to do, and I'm not sure, but we'll check later. Uh, let's have you get your point and then attack again. I guess we can now start moving through Honest Steel and start powering up those greatswords. Still no use for the demigrips, but uh, we've military heritage maxed out, and the attrition lower. I guess we could go into Reassuring Presence as well. Assuming that we have enough points, which by the looks of it we probably do, we still have about 30 points to play with. Though we do want to build Carl out to be quite the fighter. Also, what does Sigmar's War do again? Uh, let's see. One level gives him missile resistance, character experience, and oh, more attrition. Oh, that's nice. Between three points in Sigmar's Ward, if we get Reassuring Presence and the military. Hmm. I'm losing my voice a little bit. And the military heritage vanguard. And we'd be able to barely suffer any attrition. This will be good if Carl ever needs to go to Norska or something like that. And he probably will have to at some point. Chaos is going to come down. And so are the Norskans. But anyway, uh, let's give you Honest Steel for now, I think. We're not going to run in a lot of missile damage from Sylvania. So, even with their access to those units. Uh, you can have Honest Steel. And then speed of horse, I guess. And then I'll think about some other stuff, but honestly, Honest Steel covers both the Greatswords and Demi Griff Knights, and then Speed of Horse co covers Reichsguard. The only potential thing that we may want to do is Pistol Core, depending on how many uh, uh, how many ranged units we Some want to keep in this army later on. But anyway, Carl, away you go, buddy. Attack. This guy should be out of resolvable. Hopefully this doesn't do too much damage. It's a low casualties. And I should have turned off the, uh, I should have turned this off, but oh well. Uh, we'll do it in a second. Melee attack trait gain for Assault Expert, good. And income from post-battle loot kidnapper, good. And before I forget, what we also want to do is give you the Lichbone Pen. So in that light, and what do we take away? Hmm. I guess it's going to have to be the Pit Fighter. We don't have much of a choice. We'll also get Dragon Tooth back after this, I think. Dragwald Runefang versus Reichland Runefang. Yeah, the, the fact is it buffs everybody up nearby, and Carl has a lot of use for that. Uh, and Sillaries, you can have the Lichbone Pennant. Also, just to address a couple comments before I forget, and uh, one of them was to possibly trade Castle Bastun for Grung Zint. There's two reasons that we didn't do that. One is that uh, Grung Zint is on the way out, although with the new update, with the new patch and the control to plus 25, if we were to take it, it would not rebel, I guess, in this particular situation. And the other option, though, is we still have Monfort, and we're still going to trade it to these guys, and maybe we can trade that for Grung Zint. Although I did check, and Grung Zint was worth like 70 points originally, because I guess it's a tier 3, and Castle Bastun was worth like 1. Well, not 1 point, but it is a tier 1, so... Yeah, uh, that probably wasn't going to happen anyway. But maybe once we take the Blackstone post, which actually we'll check in a second. Uh, the other comment was to not necessarily build the... Uh, where are we here? The toll gates in Altdorf, and while we can build the lower level tier 3 thing in these territories, if we wanted to, I would like to get the tier 4 building anyway. Mostly for the growth to the adjacent provinces, but also for the income to all buildings in adjacent provinces. Though I will think about it. We could always later on get rid of it for a Shrine of Sigmar, if we really, really want to, but early growth is certainly going to help. The other option is to build when we replace all of these farms with more paved roads. And that's certainly a decent option as well, but the thing there is I was thinking that since Altdorf is pretty much inevitably going to be a military hub, we build armories in every single province here, replacing every single farm, which will give us a total of minus 60% recruitment cost and plus 2 recruitment capacity. So this place will be able to just pump out troops constantly. And the toll gates with the extra movement range out of Altdorf would also help with that as well. And just a thought though. Oh, and we got minus 30% recruit cost from Outriders and Pistoliers, so those guys will basically be free to recruit uh, out of uh, out of this territory. Hmm. 
Yeah, the only thing that makes me question this is not having the Cathedral of Sigmar in Altdorf, which seems wrong from a loreful perspective, but uh, Altdorf doesn't need the control, it doesn't need the corruption reduction. Really, it's just the ability to recruit the, uh, uh, the Sigmarite Disciples, and we could potentially put that elsewhere, nearby. Like in Nuln, for example, mm, depending on if we have enough uh, spots there. Also, what does the Nuln Cannon Foundry do? Unit capacity increases for Hellstorms, lovely. And faction-wide artillery increase and upkeep for artillery reduction. Yes, that's pretty good. Alrighty, ooh, also, speaking of good, we've got probably only a couple of turns left until Talibekland offers to confederate again, which we are going to take this time, so all of this territory will be ours. Yes, that'll take us lower in Imperial authority, but... I do think it'll be worth our time. Now, Carl, to needling you go. And let's see what we're looking at here. First of all, let's give the Lichbone Pennant to, I guess, Carl for now. Hmm, this looks also water resolvable. Oh, also, somebody suggested we try to put the Lichbone Pennant on the Borderman to give them magical damage as well, which is an interesting thought as well. Although it looks like the units we're facing off against in this particular case, they are not... Uh, they are not physically resistant, so that wouldn't do anything here yet. When we give Carl back the Reichland Runefang, he'll lose the Lichbone Pennant, we'll try to put it on the Borderman. And then, of course, when we get him Galmaraz, which apparently doesn't have magical damage, we'll have to give him back the Lichbone Pennant. By necessity. As unfortunate as that may be. I still think Galmaraz should have a magical uh, attack, though. Anyway. And I forgot to turn off the freaking <laughs> research again. It's it's difficult. You have to remember in every single attack, and there's a lot of attacks. Uh, we're going to return this to Sterland, obviously. And that's why we're here. Oh, wow, we got another Brass Cleaver. That's a very nice pickup. You already have one, but it's always great to get these. Eight melee attack and aura is very strong. Uh, we are right beside the Silver Seal, but I do question as to whether we want to fight this right now. I feel like because this gives the casualty or punishment and the cash or the uh, control thing and gives us a fairly significant bonus, we want to wait until we have other provinces to benefit from it. Because currently Altdorf is maxed out, and while the wasteland is not, do we really want to waste the buff from the silver seal? It only costs 500 to teleport yes. anyway. I feel like we can do it later. Uh, Carl, you can stay beside Needling and keep healing here. And I guess we're going to advance to Fort Oberstire and stuff next turn or so. Unless these guys attack us, which I would be very happy with if they did. Alright, Carl, start moving this way. Uh, move beside Needling and protect it. And we got another level out of that as well. Lovely. More honest steel. Carl's steel just gets more and more honest every day. And last episode, we did drop the, ca the Comet of Cassandora on the enemy, which did certainly and do decent amounts of damage, but I think we still want to upgrade Harmonic Convergence and possibly Wind Blast first, mostly because we use these things constantly, especially Harmonic Convergence, very spammable, and it is a good way to get access to Roiling Skies as well, which we currently don't have, but... Uh, yeah, certainly something to do. Gotta be careful with the points left over on the uh, Celestial Wizard, though. There's still a lot of stuff that we may want to get here, and hopefully he does actually have enough points. And oh, he's got his Imperial Pegasus now as well, that's quite nice. Mm. Our money situation's not amazing, though. Uh, also, how's your corruption here? Well, you're losing it, but... It's gonna take some time. Alrighty, anything left that we gotta do? Uh, the Wasteland, you could upgrade your farm. But do we really want to do this right now? Maybe later, because you're recruiting. You could just do it next turn, or whatever. Mostly because I don't feel like canceling those. Uh, you know what, let's upgrade Best Stun right now. And I also wanted to check this. We've been sieging this for a while. These guys have taken attrition, and yeah, casualties are low. I think we can just auto-resolve this. Yeah, we could fight it, but I just don't think it's going to be a particularly interesting battle. All we'd have to do is break down the gate, which would take about two seconds with the battering ram, and then move the arch lector in. As soon as the enemy blobs up around him, he instantly kills pretty much all of them with the uh, uh, with the grand soul fire. And then those that don't die, we just bombard with ranged units. We could also siege it for longer if we wanted to and get even more stuff, but there's no need. We have better and more difficult battles to fight, I think, so we'll just let this one go. Plus, 
And I forgot to turn the uh, thing off again. <laughs> it's gonna be every time. Ah, oh, sorry about that. Occupy the place. And Bone Picker casualties captured post battle. Barrel Legion destroyed. And uh, we can't upgrade you immediately, so that means we'll upgrade you. Wait, actually. Depending on if we can trade you. We can, however, get the Iron Mining Pit here immediately, and I guess the growth. And I get the growth first. We will probably need to build walls in Zifflin anyway. And probably Blackstone Post, because the enemy might ignore Burbray and Helmgart in favor of trying to go for these relatively isolated territories. But what I want to see is this. Will you be willing to trade us Monfa for Grengzint now? No, minus 13.2. All right, fine. Annoying, but it is what it is. We'll try to upgrade Monfar to level 2, and then after that, perhaps, they'd be willing. Let's upgrade Grung or Karak Zifflin in the meantime, and then we'll trade for Zint afterwards. Unless, of course, Zint falls to the, uh, uh, to the Vampiric Rebellion here, in which case we'll simply send these guys over. Now, what we probably also want to do, since you're building up this army... You're not going to need the archers anymore, which we could trade to some degree to Gregor here. Or actually, we could trade the pikemen to him as well. Assuming we don't build up a new army, but I feel like we probably don't want to do a brand new army right now. Mm. Although we could just send him and just have him hold his pikes and stuff. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll keep it like that. We'll use half stacks here for now, and just as base uh, defenders to power up the places. And we'll see after. Alrighty, that now looks pretty good to me. You want to get probably Root Marcher right now. And also, with Defender of Men, you're pretty unlikely to be under siege. You were built specifically to hold the forts, so even if you move southward to fight stuff, and you won't be able to use that, which means we're probably better off getting a new lord for the uh, moving army, as in the fire while moving army. But anyway, uh, let's uh, go to next turn. Let's fight some more vamps in some hopefully proper battles for Castle Templehof, especially if it gets a full stack. Should be a good fight. Uh, let's skip this. Outpost upgrade available? No, but you know what? That does remind me. We want to build an outpost in Durthu's place, so let's go for Paravaw, mostly because I don't necessarily want it to fall. And I also didn't want to spend the 2k, but we did We did have the money for now, so. Too bad we couldn't build it at the Waterfall Palace. I suppose we could move it once Paravon, or once at Torgavan, rather, and get uh, confederated with Waterfall Palace. It is a possibility, or an eventuality, I should say. End the turn now. And I will try to turn off the uh, research next turn. <laughs> before we attack, or maybe the first thing. I should just really get into the habit of... Uh, Turning off research is the first thing I do every episode. Or maybe even the first thing I do every turn. And what are you doing? Did you just move closer to us? What? Oh, AI. That's not going to help. He's probably just going to back off when we attack him because we're right beside Needling. And where are you going, Alberic? Huh. I wonder if he's fighting Draka right now. We actually... Oh, Ostermark's been destroyed. Oh, that's not so good. We'll have to... Uh... We'll have to recover them. That was kind of an inevitability. I guess that's what we get for not to taking on Draka, but that'll be something for Vlad to do as he goes back north after he's done with uh, Sylvania. And what we'll probably do is we'll send somebody to fight the dwarfs as well, which will probably have to be you, Wolfram. Mostly because they have imperial territories and we, uh, well, we don't want that. Uh, income from industry, yes, we will cancel the next thing, however. Engineer's Guild, there we go. I'm glad that happened because I just remembered it. You are trading with Clan Angrand, oh. They're not going to like it when we inevitably attack you. But attack you we will. Okie dokie, Carl, tis your turn again. Now, question, you have a student already, do you not? Actually, you do not. You have a scribe, which means by your level up, you can still get more students. Attack Steinbeck here. Steinbeck's going to run because, well, of course he will. Ah, and then we get a full stack and a garrison at Fort Oversar, and it's a minor settlement battle. Oh, my. That should be a pretty fun fight. Now, let's attack you. I fear that if we do, we won't be able to reach Fort Oberstar this turn. But oh, well. Let me get to it next turn. Uh, let's auto-resolve this. And down you go, bud. And we got a little bit more prestige, and we'll take the money. Now, 
Oh, we're in enemy territory. No, we can reach Fort Oberstar. Oh, well, that's just lovely, because that means we get a fight. Uh, we can't turn to trenches, but oh well. Not a big deal. In fact, you're gonna siege this. And close victory, eh? I like the sound of that. Did we have any level ups? No. I was actually hoping to get Roiling Skies, because this guy has a bunch of bats. Uh, but oh well. Too bad we can't go into trenches. Uh, do we want to do other admin stuff before attacking? No, you know what? I think we don't. Mostly because... Oh, you're going to retake the moot, aren't you? Eh. Uh, what was I saying? We will probably want to do the fight first. We'll do the admin after. We've already done plenty of admin, and this fight we can fight cinematically. The enemy also has repeated uses of rays dead here, which should be pretty nice. Uh, do we need... Hmm... Oh, well, Carl has the Lich Bone Pen, so he has the magical damage, though, if we temporarily... No, you know what? Will you. We will give him the Reichland Rune Fang back. For now. So, you can have Dragon Tooth. Uh, yes, Beast Slayer, Dragon Tooth is yours. And this will give you magical attacks, and we'll put the... Uh, we will indeed put the Lich Bone Pennant on the Borderman, who can shoot at the Cairn Wraiths. But that, I think, will be... will make it a little bit easier, at least here's hoping. Carl, you know you don't need this anymore. Mortarman, you do. And here we go. Alrighty, here we go. Our first foray into Sylvania is going to start at Fort Oberstire. And I know that I'm pretty biased because the Vampire Counts are my favorite faction, but look at their architecture. This is this is just glorious. Uh, this is a very, very nice keep. I certainly prefer it to the Chaos Forts in terms of the uh, in terms of uh, the uh, looks and the layout of these cities. But anyway, here we go. We're gonna start the battle off by bombarding the enemy and annoying them as best we can with our mortars and we're gonna have Carl knock down this tower that is a splash damage tier 3 tower before the enemy can get too much mileage out of it. Said tower is launching skulls though fortunately at the summoned unit of halberdiers that is in front of the rest of our army so we don't care as much about it. Ooh I want to see if the target tracking is good here. Yeah that's pretty good. And that's a, uh, it's a homing missile attack, but not for long as Carl has already knocked it down. Now we are going to speed this up a little bit for a few seconds, but Carl is also going to go after the bats. Why not? They are not that much of a threat to him, and he can clear the skies pretty much by himself, though even with mortar support, if he really wants to. He just knocked like 20 bats out with one, uh, with one attack. Damn. I mean, I suppose to be fair, Deathclaw's probably, uh, Deathclaw's got a beak, it's got its claws and its paws, Carl's got his hammer. That's a lot of bats that you can hit in a single, uh, uh, in a single motion, effectively. Lots of damage potential there, but yeah, Carl isn't really threatened by these guys. He's gonna take a tiny bit of damage potentially, but we're just gonna pop that uh, overcast harmonic convergence on him, giving him 92 melee defense and 204 armor. No chance those bats are gonna hurt him, and we can just knock them all out without threat to the rest of our army. We do have a lot of stuff to attack here. There's quite a lot of units in this particular settlement, and oh, look, some of them are actually moving in, and also I guess it's going to be Time for the Bordermen to take some action here. Uh, let's see what they do to these uh, to these Karen rates with their magical damage. All right, looks like the Karen rates are actually doing the dance rather than going directly for an attack. This doesn't seem like the ideal thing to do. They're probably better off directly charging our lines and trying to avoid the fire because they'll just die eventually. Yeah, they'll uh, dodge a good amount of the shots, but they'll still die, and by the looks of it, they can't actually dodge the uh, grenades, who, with that volley, appear to have killed about half of them and done enough damage to them to take them out. One more volley and they should be done for good. This is gonna be a waste of the uh, Borderman's uh, ammo, but it's okay. 
I mean that last volley, not the entire volley. Oh, well done, one unit of Karen rates cleared out, the balance of power has actually moved to about even. Carl is still fighting bats, but frankly there's four full units and he has to clear them out, but there we go, the mortars are now firing and they will, I believe, do splash damage to these bats because bats have a bad tendency to group up really, really close to each other. And as long as the mortars can help, this should clear it out faster. There we go, look at that mortar shot, very nice. Beautiful. Probably could have done that earlier, but they were busy attacking those Cairn Wraiths and I believe another unit of uh, skeletons that was around somewhere. But switching to attacking these guys is clearly worth the time. I guess this is one of those situations where yes, we could have gotten some use out of Roiling Skies, as I was saying before we jumped in here, but really not so much. As in, it's not like these are Vargeists, we don't really care about them all that much, especially if Carl's taking them out uh, before they uh, can go in and annoy all of our range units, which it looks like they will not be able to. And the enemy is also moving additional units in to attack our lines, but it's just a pile of zombies and, uh, and doggos, they're really no kind of threat. And the zombies, I believe, were summoned, not an actual unit of zombies, they were summoned from the uh, bound army ability as well. Well, these guys are gonna get surrounded and destroyed mortars. Stop that. Oh, yeah, this is one annoying thing. The mortars switched targets really, really quickly because the bats disappeared, as in they died, and the mortars instantly switched targets and started to uh, fire upon our lines. I do wish that there was a way to tell the mortars not to fire uh, if uh, you were in danger of hitting a friend. And I also wish that there was a way to tell them to fire if there was a danger of hitting a friend, and as in for the missile infantry. Like sometimes, especially with uh, factions like the Skaven, you don't care if you're mowing down a hundred of your uh, Skaven slaves to kill one enemy uh, one enemy dwarf or something, who cares? But uh, sometimes your rattling guns refuse to fire because there are Skaven slaves in the way, and that just it makes no sense. You, <laughs> we all know that that wouldn't be a thing. So yeah, I think that this game really needs the addition of the ability to tell your units how to handle friendly fire. Or maybe some factions should directly not care about friendly fire, like the Skaven. And the Orcs. At the very least. All right, well, anyway, I digress. It's all it's all feature creep. There's a billion things we want, and uh, we can't have them all because the devs have a limited amount of uh, time and money and all that. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's see about those Graveguard moving in. Carl is also... Where is he? He's also flying overhead. Doesn't really need to join this right now because these guys are getting kind of wrecked. Uh, but, uh, well, we can always get him to help out a little bit later. And there we go, mortars are actually firing on the proper units back there. We're just going to retarget them as soon as possible. The Sons of Sigmar, together with the uh, summoned halberdiers and our other units, are holding fairly well. Our single unit of Imperial Foot, single only for a couple more turns, as we do have our ferrying army about to get them here. And the rest of our range units continue firing, and we've deployed in such a way where we essentially have the uh, we have this area as a pass, and we can hold it pretty much forever against the enemy onslaught. If anything, this is definitely one of those situations where the AI should be programmed to probably sally out. When it sees that the enemy has a uh, massive amount of range superiority, there's really no need to hide behind the wall, wall quote-unquote, walls within the city and take, uh, and take damage over time from the range superiority. Because it's not going to stop until we run out of ammo, and by then half of the enemy will be dead at least. Anyway, speaking of being dead or returned to the grave, because they're already dead, the grave guard are done for. Some more dire doggos going to charge our front lines, but charging into Imperial Foot, and with Carl landing and hitting them in the back, is going to not end so well for them. Two seconds after the charge, they've lost about half their HP. They are still... Oh, critical binding, there we go. I actually thought that they would start melting a little bit earlier, but it's not like they're going to do a lot of damage. And there we go, well done. Imperial Foot continue to hold. I also gotta double check whether the Imperial Foot take the... Uh, uh, take the buffs from the speed of horse, because it buffs Reichsguard, technically. But these guys are infantry. So what red line buffs actually benefit them? Hmm. I guess we'll see. Would be a little bit unfortunate if nothing uh, 
nothing upgrades them in the red line. But oh well. Alrighty, well, we are now gonna move forward a little bit, which means not attacking until the enemy moves in to attack. Well, I'm actually getting a couple of shots off there. And there are, by the looks of it, a couple more towers on the field, so we're going to back off and have Carl kill one and have our wizard Theon kill the other. I'm still on the fence as to whether to keep him. It seems like this particular lore is quite decent uh, for what we're uh, for what we're doing. The only thing that makes me uh, not want to keep it is the lack of piercing bolts from the uh, uh, from the allure of fire. Generally, I like to start with the Lure of Fire, but we can always put a Lure of Fire into somebody else's army. There's also the fact that Theon, I believe, has a garbage. Uh, uh, garbage trait, so we do need a better one. But anyway, we'll see. Alrighty, here we go. We've reformed our battle lines, at least over on this side. Same thing on the other side, but there's no enemies there. And it looks like the skeletons are gonna move in and try to attack our Imperial Foot. A bad matchup for them as well. I guess we could watch these guys fight each other. Some nice shots here as well. Just enjoying the show. Tactically, not much to say about this particular situation. It's just skeleton warriors fighting our units. And the gunners are going to help out as well, make those skeleton warriors die a little bit quicker, though probably not uh, uh, not, necessar not necessary, per se. Mostly because if we were to preserve our ammunition, we could use it on other units, and frankly, I doubt that the Skeleton Warriors are going to do sufficient damage to the uh, uh, to the Foot Knights here. In fact, I'd be curious to see if they even bring one down. Speaking of bringing them down, Carl and Theon are moving away from the rest of the army. Sure, we're still getting attacked, uh, but they have sighted another potential target. The enemy lord is here with his own command squad. Another necromancer, uh, as well as him, which is a master necromancer, and a vampire plus a unit of skeleton warriors. But perhaps Carl, especially with buffs, could take those guys on and assassinate the enemy lord. So good luck to him. We'll check that back in a few more seconds, but I'd rather watch the uh, knights fight a little bit. Especially since it's not just the range units gunning the enemy down, I do like to see the uh, uh, the foot soldiers actually get into combat. The spotlight has been on the bordermen and on our uh, range units for quite a lot lately, so yeah. I still don't see the corpses of any of the knights, so this is quite working out. Man, I'm really liking these shots here. Very cinematic looking battle. Oh, and one of the Imperial Foot finally goes down. It took them quite a while. Let's just check on the HP here. So the Imperial Foot have actually lost a decent chunk of HP, about 25%, though some of that will probably have been to the Bordermen there. I have decided to have the uh, Bordermen actually start attacking, mostly because there's a bunch of enemy units, and, uh, well, since we lost an Imperial Foot, we gotta take revenge and kill these guys just a little bit faster. Obviously, Bordermen firing into massive blobs of relatively light armored units, like these skeletons and these ghouls, will mean that they go down very quickly and a massive amount of damage on the Bordermen as well. Plus, the regular gunners helping out. I think I just saw another one of... Okay, another couple of the Foot Knights die. Oh, Borderman. <laughs> they are a danger to us. They absolutely are, but they're just so fun. And they're very effective against enemy infantry. Granted, when we run into enemy armies that aren't as infantry-heavy, this will probably not be nearly as effective. I'll be curious to see how they fare against Chaos once we start running into Chosen and stuff, as in when the enemy stops using Marauders. But that's a ways away. For now, they're going to be the absolute stars of every army that they're in. Anyway, while that is happening, Carl has been attacking the enemy lord and has brought him down to about half HP. Unfortunately, between the vampire attacking and the dire wolves, we are uh, starting to lose HP ourselves. Decided to pop that potion of healing and move out. The enemy lord is also able to cast Spirit Leech, or actually that's the vampire casting Spirit Leech, which was hurting Carl further. And unfortunately, with him by himself, this doesn't 
the same super likely, at least not until the enemy lord's a little bit more isolated. Carl then is going to try to get away from this by running around and hopefully lifting off, while Theon returns to the battle here, and another reason that we wanted to get away and return to the fray with Theon was because the Karenites have come out, and they are already engaged with their great swords here, and huh, really the hand gunners can't fire through this? That's a little bit unfortunate. Oh, come on, this this is... It looks like you should have pretty clear firing lanes. I specifically put these guys in a formation to take advantage of this. Oh, well. A little bit unfortunate. Sometimes you never know what your uh, units are going to do. Carl's still trying to... <laughs> He's still trying to run away, they won't let him lift off, which is a little bit odd. I've definitely seen the AI lift off basically completely surrounded by units. We may have to bail him out with a spell if uh, if he gets stuck. It's just a, ma <laughs> it's just a massive mob of units uh, just chasing him. Look, dude, you have a completely clear path to lift off. SFO didn't do anything to unit flying units' abilities to uh, run away, has it? Or lift off, rather? Hm. I do wonder. Anyway, where are we here? I lost track. Uh, looks like the uh, Karenites are pretty badly beat up now. We cast an Overcast or a non Thunderbolt on them and have turned the Bordermen to targeting them as well, especially since they've done enough damage here, both to the enemy and to us. A few grenades, magical grenades, I should say, should be just the right thing here. And we're not actually targeting the Karenites directly, but targeting the units behind the Karenites, because extra shots will hit the Karenites anyway, but with the unit further away, away from the great swords, not taking the uh, ad additional damage from our uh, grenades. We're also going to back that unit of great swords up and reinforce with a different unit of great swords or swap them out effectively so that we don't take uh, any more damage on them because otherwise we'll need to heal them up. Bordermen continue to do massive damage on every single flank and this is why I want the second unit of Bordermen because we could have had one firing here and one firing here but what a disgusting unit. They are going to have so much damage after this battle is over. In the meantime over on this side Carl I decided to give up. He wasn't lifting off and the enemies were just surrounded him and while I don't usually do this it seems like the only way for him to actually get away rather than wasting time just uh, constantly uh, constantly telling him to move away was to drop a comet of Cassandora and there we go that spell just absolutely deletes infantry and a unit of crypt ghouls two units of crypt ghouls and a unit of dire wolves are out i usually feel bad about this as i don't like to drop in a lord and then pop the uh, uh you uh, pop spells on it at least so far away from the army but you know one occasional use in a situation where I think it was warranted and also these are crypt ghouls and dire doggos it's hardly their elite army and they're no threat to any of our units either way. Much less so than the graveyard, I should say. Alrighty, and the Bordermen continue laying down an absolutely withering amount of uh, grenade throws. Or launches, I guess. And, oh, okay, gotta be careful, guys. Come on. <laughs> oh, just opened up a hole in our lines. And that's why you gotta be careful with that unit. It would be nice if they had uh, fire at ground as well, and just like artillery pieces do. And we've actually told them to stop firing at this point so that they uh, stop doing damage to our own. Especially with so few enemy units remaining. Our hand gunners, however, can continue to fire at any other units. So there are more skeletons and more ghouls coming in, running through these swampy, grassy territories. <laughs> I was laughing how ghouls run. And there we go. Oh, they're such tiny little guys. I mean, not really, they're just super hunched over, but still. Alrighty, well, the ghouls are in, and the front line here continues. Looks like it's gonna have to hold for a while, though now we do have Carl coming back, and Theon as well. On the other hand, however, the enemy lord has actually moved and isolated himself, which means Carl and Theon should be able to go after him. Theon drops in first, because obviously the Pegasus is faster, and we just want to stop the enemy lord from moving, wherein he has absolutely no reinforcement. And then these two should be able to mop him up fairly quick. Carl actually did quite a lot of damage to him when he was fighting, even when surrounded, and uh, dropped him all the way to his uh, healing cap. 
Alrighty, well, those two shouldn't have too many problems with that, and the great swords are gonna help, though the enemy is moving its own great weapons, a grave guard, in as well. We do have the hand gunners who are now able to fire, since the great swords are not in their way very slightly. And the enemy is calling more units to him. We're gonna pop the upgraded harmonic convergence on our great swords here, giving them 220 armor, 104 and 185 melee attack and defense, and that should keep them well alive against both the enemy great swords, or the enemy grave guard rather, and the dire doggos especially, and due to their lack of armor pierce. And it looks like the enemy lord is just about done. Here comes the explosion of that corpse cart, and that should be a pretty massive morale shock to the enemy. The Graveguard are getting surrounded. For some reason, our handgunners decided to move in, but that's okay because our Reichsguard have arrived and are going to help out. Now, we've also ran out of ammunition on both our mortars, all of our crossbows, and... let's see, the bordermen. Bordermen are nearly out of ammunition, which is a rare thing, but man, the amount of damage they would have output from that. And let's see, our handgunners are actually okay, mostly because, well, they, I guess they had a uh, somewhat difficult time firing. And there we are with the Reichsguard moving in to reinforce uh, the enemy is done for. The enemy army decides to shatter, especially with the death of their lord, and we've just got to mop up or otherwise wait for the enemy to crumble. And the ranks of the restless dead soon to be at rest. Man, that was basically just a straight up 20 minute battle. It was quite a long one, but of course it was a full garrison plus a full stack and a garrison with a wall building as well. So it's not surprising that it took quite a while to do. It was really quite fun as well. Now we will have to consider what to... Uh, uh, what to do with this territory in a few seconds as well. I don't remember which uh, settlement this is anymore, but I feel... No, wait, this is Fort Oberstyr. And historically... Sylvania was given to Sterling, so it'll give us this option, but... Well, I'm gonna deliberate about this in a few seconds, but uh, I don't know. It really depends on how much movement Carl has after this, because we could get more fealty, but on the other hand, uh, there is a precedent or a good reason to establish a beachhead in Sylvania to actually use this to heal up and then continue the uh, continue the attack to that suffering attrition, which may be the better option. Anyway, this battle's over. There's still a necromancer just moving around, slowly trundling on his corpse cart. I, uh, it is unfortunate that the AI isn't capable of understanding how important corpse carts are to the undead line. They make it so much stronger with the Vigor Mortis and the, uh, well, on the Necromancers, the Master of the Dead, as well as the Unholy Lodestone, if that's the type of corpse cart they had. Uh, but uh, the AI keeping those back instead of advancing them together with their lines, really kind of wasteful. Granted, in our particular situation, we would have just gunned them down, but nonetheless, the AI should have actually tried to use them. A uh, close victory for us, and I'm not super surprised considering we're completely out of ammo, but the damage wasn't too bad, and the, uh, and the battle was pretty great. Let's see the damage on those bordermen. I'm very curious. All right, there we go. Not too bad at all. Certainly, I think, worth the wait and uh, probably a much more interesting battle than Blackstone Post would have been. We got a thousand prestige, about two thousand gold out of that as well. The Bordermen got 120,000 damage. What an obnoxious unit, though I do expect that they did more damage to us than the enemy did, with the possible exception of... now. I was about to say, with the possible exception of the uh, Karen race, they did get 44 kills, uh, but nonetheless, I think overall damage was probably from the Bordermen's uh, stray shots into our own lines. It's nice that we're heavily armored, because if we weren't, the Bordermen would just be obliterating our own forces. One minor annoyance, though, <laughs> 120,000. Oh, what a ridiculous unit. Uh, minor annoyance, though, is the uh, was Carl's inability to lift off when being chased. Kind of funny, but nonetheless kind of annoying as well. We had to drop that Comet of Kazandora just to get him out, uh, but oh well. 
He does have the healing potion, so he doesn't really care all that much. Uh, we could return this to Sterling, but if we do... Hmm, we're at max movement range. We'd suffer a turn of attrition. We're not so badly damaged that we care that much about it, mind you. But... I'm not sure that we want to return this. Uh, wait, Fort Oberstire. That's part of Castle Tempelhof, right? Yeah. Hmm. I'll have to think about this. You know what? I think we're better off taking this one for ourselves. And, in fact, probably taking all of Sylvania for ourselves. This... this... Yeah, you know what? We're gonna occupy it. We could always directly give it to Sterling if we wanted to. And they are currently at, say, 8 fealty as well. So they'll be up to 10 reasonably soon. And frankly, they don't need this. And it'll be reasonably defensible as it has the uh, as it has the guardhouse here. Hey, we got a messenger. And we got the Zintler's Reichsguard. Oh, damn. Why do I say damn? Because that also means that Carl needs another a unit to move out of his... Uh, out of his army. Hmm. We were only expecting to get the one Reichsguard, not the two. Uh, control minus two, enemy local province, enemy leadership minus two. That's not bad. Although not a crazy effect against the AI, but nonetheless, nice to have. Get another point in Honest Steel for Carl as well. And we'll upgrade Fort Oberstire with... Hmm. Do we want growth? Well, we don't want to collect the income here for now. We want to counteract the corruption as fast as possible, but we'd have to do that through the uh, uh, through the Shrine of Sigmar. And frankly, paying 3,000 gold right now for this doesn't seem worth our time. Let's go growth instead. And we'll take both of the uh, Sylvanian territories for ourselves as well. Yeah, so all of this will be ours, even without returning to Sterland. I think we have a very decent shot of uh, getting Sterland fealty up to where we need it. Alrighty, in terms of what else we have to do this turn, if there is in fact anything else. Uh, I, we didn't get a student, uh, which is fine. <laughs> but I didn't turn it off before and we didn't get students either, so maybe we wouldn't have gotten students... Either way. Uh, Bernhardt, we do want you to transfer your two units to the free of the free company here to Aleheart. That'll mean we make less money for... Let's see. How much less money? Oh, is it considerable? Eh, about 200 gold per turn. Yeah, so this guy basically does pay for himself when he uh, when he sits in Altdorf. He costs us 270, but he also gives us a decent amount of extra income. And he also gives us the... Uh, hmm. Let's put you right here. And he also gives us a, a pretty massive control bonus as well. A recruiter, let's move you into Marienburg next turn. You know what, do we just upgrade this? It's not that big of a difference in terms of the uh, cost reduction. Let's just upgrade it right now. And then recruiter can keep recruiting. What do we need here? So we have three and five with six, so we're good. We are good with the free company plus the... Uh, uh, plus the Sterling's Revenge unit. That means we are able to get two more Pistoliers, two War Wagons, and this army will be good to go. We probably will want to get a Wizard for the army as well at some point. And, ooh, hello. Imperial Calibration. Ooh. Well, that's tempting. That is sorely tempting. Not necessarily for this army, but for example, for Balthazar Gelt's army. Uh, this would be a pretty darn ideal Empire captain for him to have. And in fact, I think we're going to get him on the field. It's going to cost us money, it's going to cost us upkeep, uh, but who knows when we'll run into Imperial Calibration again. All right. And I guess you could train yourself being in Gregor Rodziner's army for now. And just to level up until we uh, until we have Gelt ready to go. Oh, and look, we have another noble and a noble archlector at that. Huh. We'll have to think about that one. Might be worth having a second noble at some point. Put one into, uh, put one into Marienburg and then keep the other in... Okay, the other was uh, the other uh, lords are man. Keep the other one in Altdorf. Alrighty, well that looks pretty darn good to me, Peter. You can sit where you are for now, I guess. I assume you still don't want to trade stuff. You do want to do military access, though. Oh, I guess we do have diplomacy. Uh, just out of curiosity, let's check this again. Grungzint for Monfar. No, not yet. But with our relationship continuing to grow. 
we may be able to use the military access possibility for uh, an increase in the chances of this trade. Though I expect that at tier 2 uh, they would be willing to do it. I'm just a little bit worried that the orcs will take it or that the uh, Skaven will take it before we do. Anyway. Well, let's double check what other diplomacy we have, and we don't really care about the border princes right now. We have a quest from Durthu to kill either Grom, who is showing here, meaning Grom probably has a stack. We gotta be careful about that, but we may be able to defeat him, or we may be able to find him, rather. And there we go. Who knows? And actually, wait a second. We got 47 passive or 47 allegiance currently with the ice court. You know what would be really good in the uh, fire while moving? Army, some war sleds. I don't have access to them as yet, but we'll keep an eye on them. I absolutely love uh, war sleds, and I'd be very curious to see how they are in the um, in SFO. For those of you who watch my Boris campaign, uh, you will know you will probably remember me singing their praises uh, the entire time, which was uh, which was fairly unusual because I'm not as fond of chariot units usually, mostly because you uh, need to micro them so so much to get uh, the best value out of them. And even though they can be pretty disgustingly useful, using up so much micro on individual units means you're not putting any of that micro anywhere else. So, you know, there's a big trade-off. Anyway, rant aside about micro and chariots and whatnot, I think I'm going to call the episode here rather than end the turn. And next time, we hit Castle Templehof, and we may be within striking distance of Drakenhof itself. I suspect that, unfortunately, Marius Lightdorf is going to take Schwarzhofen, which ain't so great because we wanted the entire province for ourselves for now, and but that's okay. Not a big deal. We'll also be able to get our second army here. Our Wolfram will arrive, though I don't know how much of Sylvania will be left by the time he's here. We may even want to pop him into Fort Oberstar and take the point of attrition, just because this is the fastest way to get to where we need to go. And in fact, that's what we're going to do. What we'll probably actually do is we'll separate Vlad, or Vlad, Carl and, damn <laughs> I can't shake it. Uh, we'll separate Carl and Wolfram pretty much immediately here. Carl can continue taking out uh, uh, Sylvania unless we want to get the defeat trade on Wolfram, but we can send Wolfram up north to start dealing with Draika, because unfortunate as it is, as much as I love Draika, we do have to uh, take her out and get Ostermark back, otherwise our... Uh, uh, our Imperial Authority isn't where we want it to be. But anyway, those are all problems for uh, next time. Stay tuned for more Empire. The Empire endures. Don't forget to leave a like and comment. All glory to the algorithm. And we really need to spend some of that prestige. And thanks for watching.